Okay, here we go, part two. On the last video, I forgot to mention, you might wanna grab yourself a handy little vacuum uh, brush for cleaning. And then something where you have a nice straight edge for scraping. So, you know, it could be an old pocket knife like I have here, or another, um, you don't wanna scratch the materials, but we do need to do a little bit of scraping as we clean. So, Let's go ahead and do some initial cleaning and just to talk through here. This rear vent, uh, I've taken it off before and I don't know if I wanna take it off this time because if you take off these three screws, there's, or four screws, there's one, two, three, four. When you take those off of the back, the plastic fan, uh, the fan mechanism is uh, mounted as well to those screws. So you need to make sure that you're aligning the screws that hold the fan in place to the back body as well as this uh, outside screen. And maybe it's more prudent to remove these outside screws and then you can attach fan and screen together at the same time. Anyway, just a word of caution. You can pull it off and realign it. I actually did that before and as I realigned it, I had to make an adjustment because the fan was uh, rubbing up against the screen and I didn't want that. So we won't be pulling that off, but what we have here, we do have this fan and this is where it breathes. So it pulls in air. Then on the outside, like any, any air filter, you wanna consider the direction of the airflow. And so I don't want to uh, suck the from the back, I don't wanna push this through but I'd like to pull it off because it's been pulling up against here. So I'd like to pull it off the opposite way. And that's where having a vacuum can be handy. Great. So that's gonna help my machine breathe better because Again, this is where the air is coming in. So if you ever put your machine too close to a back wall or uh, there's not good airflow behind your machine, it could be choking or suffocating rather because of the airflow. Now, this is my exhaust out. And so my hot air is going out. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. No, I'm not gonna zoom while I'm filming. Um, so this is really gunky gunky and funky there we go nice build up there so i am going to catch some of this and then i'll go ahead and vacuum afterward boy this would be a fun little science experiment what's inside what chemical compounds do we find inside of this little build up here I'm not a chemist. And I don't want to do a sensory analysis on it. We could smell it. And it smells like roasted coffee. Wow. Okay, so I won't do all of this right now. Just because I want to spend a lot of time kind of getting in there. You can scrape the inside wall. So back here, you can see this chamber is much uh, darker. This is the roast exhaust, and then this chamber is much lighter. There's some white kind of powdery. This would be, I'm guessing, I haven't looked at the schematic, but this would be the cooling tray exhaust. So both the cooling tray will be coming out the one side and then the exhaust heat will be coming out of the other side from the roaster. So together they collect and they blow up out of my exhaust pipe. So there we go, we'll keep on collecting more of this. And again, the air blows out this direction, so I'm safe to vacuum out that direction. The last time I did my cleaning in here too, I kind of got in there. I can see there's some silver skin on this uh, blower blade for the exhaust air out. So I might get in there and I might brush at that or scrape at that, keeping an airflow suction out. When I turn on the machine, I might actually want to turn on the machine before I put this hose back on and just kind of let the air blow out. Be safe about it. Don't put your fingers in there. But 
that could be a nice way just to get some of the extra chaff or dust out. Okay, so enough with the back there. While we're back here as well, we can see, if you ever have a power outage or a power problem, I've had a fuse go out a couple different times. I switched from a 220 to a 110 and changed the heating element. If you have that problem, there's a fuse box right here. So next to my, first I have my power button, then I have a small little fuse box, and then my power cord. So I'm gonna pull this off just since we're back here so that you can see what's under the hood there. And it comes out better with the power cord out because there's a little tooth that you can grab there as you pull this out. Now I really appreciate that when they built this machine, they put in the front fuse, which drives it. You can tell because there's the you know, positive, negative, they're gonna be the connectors up here. This is the fuse that's operating the machine. The second fuse is backup. So if your machine ever dies, if you reset the power at the wall, if you can't get it back on, your circuit, break, circuit breaker panel is on at your house, you need to pull this little fuse out and you need to inspect, do I have a connection between the top and the bottom, which creates the electrical current. So if not, take that out. You can grab it with your little needle nose pliers, take that out, take the second one, that should have come with the machine, hopefully, and you pop that in, plug it in. Now this is the old S100. I've had this machine a couple years. I bought it in 2019. So new models may look a little different. I apologize, I don't have the new model to show you, but I think a lot of the, a lot of the basic engineering should be pretty similar. Okay, so then I'm gonna plug that back in and now right next to my machine there, when I turn it on and off, that will trigger the power flow. So that's how the electrical fuse works. Keep my tools over here all together. Okay, so we've got our T8. And what we'll do is we'll take off one, two, three, four up here. We can also, you've probably had, you've probably had this off. You can take this off yourself and you can wipe clean around that edge. We'll get into the other stuff. I'm not going to remove anything back here that doesn't need to be removed. Now, when I take apart a machine and when I put it back together, I like to loosen and tighten in stages. So for example, we have four corners here. I'm gonna loosen all four before I start taking them off. And then I'm going to loosen up, take off opposite corners rather than in a circle. And there's a lot of reasons why that's good. I also tighten the same way. I might tighten them all halfway and then I'll tighten crosswise. Uh, sometimes there's an importance to uh, create balance when you are tightening or loosening. This is true on your car. It's true It's true on metal plates when you're creating alignment. You don't wanna cre create a lot of tension on these three corners because that'll possibly pull this corner and then you won't get this screw to go in. So when I tighten things, I will progressively tighten opposite corners. And then as I find each corner has been tightened, because once I can start each corner, then I can also tighten it more safely. Okay, so I've got my four here. If you're not taking a video of your machine coming apart, which I could go back and I could reference, you know, here's my four little screws. You can take pictures step by step. So whenever you pull apart a machine, if you take pictures of the process, you label things, uh, it's a great reference for you. It's kind of a how-to kit. If you ever sell your machine or you forget how to put it back together, um, you will be happy that you documented the process. Now, as I pulled the two front screws, the front of my machine now is loose. And so it's held here at the top with those same screws that hold the top piece in place. Now you wanna lift this top piece off 
slowly and carefully because inside uh, the circuit board is plugged in and connected. And so you don't just pull this off quick and uh, go in another direction with it. You slide it off of the shoot feed. Okay, so here our electrical connection is connected to the top button. So, oh, nice. I'll show you this in a moment. So you could, you know, you could just pull this off and lean this against your machine, which I'm going to do initially. You could just lean that against your machine and then don't unplug anything. So if you're unsure or if there's no reason for you to be unplugging your electrical panels, don't do it. Now, um, if you've been in there before or if you see how these open and close and unplug, disconnect, then you can do that. But again, label the process as you go. Now that we're open, this is kind of a fun thing. This slides out. Looks like it's the same on both sides. Nice and dusty on the back. Look at that. My machine, oh, my poor little Vike. I've been doing some dark roasting in it too because of the fundraisers and doing espresso. I really need to clean this guy, this is great. And, my oh my, I've got quite the collection. This is why I knew I had to get in here. Let me do this without. I've got quite the collection of this white, powdery fines, kind of this dust. I wanted to get that dust out of there. It's really dusty. Okay, that's great. It's great to get in there and to find that. I wasn't having any problems with the machine, um, but I knew things were dusty and dirty. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this connected for now. There's no reason that I have to open that up. I'm gonna show you this before we jump on in to the next video. Okay, so back here, Back here, this fan right here, this motor unit. I don't think that's a fan. That is a fan. Um, this fan unit, it's just covered in that white dust. Okay, here's our back fan that drives. Our heating unit is up front here, heating coil. This is an exhaust pipe, this red one. This is our electrical line to the front plate. So, you know, if you had to remove that for some reason, you could. Before I clean any of this, I'm going to get my vacuum. I'm gonna get my nice vacuum so that I can have some airflow, just picking up the dust as I lightly touch into this. And then uh, we'll be cleaning down here. And we, we will move then to the front face as well and underneath, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to clean as much as I can. I hope I don't break anything because this is documented. <laughs> See you in the next part.